What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Michael McCrudden, and I'm on We Love Hip Hop. This is Toronto's best media company, giving you guys all the latest buzz you need to know about. So be sure to follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Boom! East End Clips on the Beat. Voice. Yeah, media, like, <laughs> yeah. It's the voice. Yes, sir. So awesome. we got Michael McCruden in the building right now. You know what I'm saying? Media, uh, media company to media company. You know what I'm saying? One of those. That's a good thing. Yeah, man. We're, we're so busy interviewing rappers and different artists and stuff like that, that it's sometimes it's good to connect with different people who are actually in the media as well. Who are, do, who are covering a lot of the same rappers that we cover, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, quick question. How, with all of this stuff, like, we're all doing Zoom, right? How has this, the vid and the pandemic's been affecting you with the content? I, yeah, I think it's funny. I've, I haven't stopped working, so things haven't changed for me at all. But I actually kind of built my business, like, with the mindset, like, all right, I can't, if I can't get interviews... How can I really do this show? And that, like, you know, I started with nothing and no contacts. So I was already kind of uh, ready for this whole pandemic. Like, uh, you know, people couldn't meet in studio. I had a lot of people to come into studio. We couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've already kind of figured out ways to work around it. So with the internet now, you can get anything done, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even your your Mm -hmm. Instagram page, the um, Before They Were Famous Instagram page is booming. And y'all are posting regular news, like every update of different things that are going on in the scene, right? How do y'all keep up with your news? How do you, is it just you or is there a team of y'all doing that news? No, it's never been just me. There's always been a team of of friends, like kids I went to college with or other, uh, you know, aspiring journalists or artists. They, they, they latch on to what I'm doing and I I put them on the, the payroll. So the, that you're 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 referencing famous news. That's under my personal name, but it's like our our news page. We just yeah. hit hundred k. Uh, that's oh, my nice. boy Kevin, nice. and he was like uh, he was like a DJ academics in Toronto years ago, but he got he got deleted. So he's been he's been itching to get back out there, right? So mm. I was like, well, I need a man who knows this stuff. So he he's behind a lot of that those posts. What was his page name before that? And so we just started before they were famous. I had to buy that one. But before that, it's all been under my personal one, which is McCrud and M, my last name and an M. No, no, but the, the, the gentleman that you were just speaking of, you said he was like the uh, uh, Toronto academics. Oh, yeah, he, it, was, it was Kev Edits with, with, with a three instead of an E. That was I remember e. that. I know that, yeah. I remember that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. Have you ever had any of those issues with the page getting taken down? Because we just dealt with that not too long ago. Like, our, we got a page taken down and we got hacked. Yeah. Man, I've Instagram, I, I've only been like shadow banned and like, uh, like, you know, some violations videos got taken down. But on YouTube, I've seen everything. Like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, it was the wild, wild west. So people were going crazy doing whatever they could to shut everyone down, you know? Yeah. You've been YouTubing for like five years. So like, give us a, something that's happened to the channel that you've made your heart stop over the five years. Oh my God. Well, so it's, it's actually been 10 years I've been doing it. Really? And, uh, I remember, wow. Like YouTube was the place you like put stuff on it, trying to get a TV job. Like you put like your demo tape. Hey MTV, my name is Michael McCrudden. I only have a minute, so I'm gonna make this really brief, but I need to start off by letting you guys know this is my dream job. The idea that this would become like, like like I got TV people looking at me going, you've you've passed us, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I'm blown away on like how things turned out. Um, but yeah, man, like I've had like just crazy, you know, friends turn into enemies or, um, you know, like someone works for you and then all of a sudden they start doing, 
your show on their own. Mm. Uh, I've had like mm-hmm. crazy emails come in. You think it's YouTube, but it's actually like a guy in India trying to hack your account. Whoa. Uh, and then there's just like, there's really nasty creators out there who can spin a story and like take your, your video footage and like re-edit it to make you look like you're like something you're not. Yeah. It's crazy. So you're telling me that as a creator that like what tried to like drag your name through the mud or something like that out there on YouTube? Yeah, I've been into I've been in a few public battles uh, definitely over my five years. I've been I've been I've like kind of duked it out with a few other creators in the news and and some hip hop scenes. Yeah. So give us one of these because like I feel like I didn't dig dig far enough into the into the internet streets then. I, I think a lot of people know that me and this guy Keemstar, he does like drama alert. Me and him never really got along. Um, yeah, you know, we just don't like each other's style, I guess. So what do you mean? Like he just started jumping in your comments or like how did that beef start? Oh, like, no, it's bigger than that, man. Like it's people, huge, Friday. they activate their fans, right? So if you've got like a million followers on Twitter, you, you send them over. Like this guy made a call out. He goes, I want all my fans to unsubscribe from Michael McCrudden. Whoa. So like all of a sudden, <laughs> so the man basically Beyonce, the man with his, with his fans, like, you know, don't make the, the beehive come for you. That's basically what this guy's doing. His million followers unfollow this guy. So that's like that guy's personal beehive. Wow. Am I right? Yeah, man, it's nasty. Cause like, <laughs> And like these are fourteen year old kids, so they got nothing else to do. They're in like, they're in your Twitter. They're like leaving nasty comments. They're disliking all your videos. They like dig up like embarrassing pics and like repurpose them. Like it's 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 a lot. Wow. Whoa. That's that's hectic. So did you see a follower loss or a subscriber loss off of that beef? Yeah, that, this one was like a couple of years ago, but I think I lost like two thousand. Right. Wow. Which. Wow. That's a chunk. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but I've seen, I've seen this, this, I don't really want to talk too much about this guy. Let's just talk in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen some creators lose millions. Like, like mm-hmm. you cancel them and their whole thing drops. Like they used to show you your exact number of subscribers and now they have to narrow it to the closest like thousand because of this like cancel culture stuff it's crazy wow that that's that youtube beef yo that's like he said but it's I'm the like, 14 year old kids that got nothing but time on their hands but remember right? too it's like youtube beef that goes to like twitter beef that comes back to like instagram beef and that comes back to your youtube and it's like it's just like a vicious cycle it's crossing so everywhere it's all over it's spider webbing it's spider webbing work. across the internet man that's, <laughs> that's crazy, crazy. I, thank God we haven't experienced something like that, Friday. Thank God. Not yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Knock on wood. MTV. Anyways. You wanted to be an MTV host at one point? Yeah, man. Much music meant the world to me. It was much music or MTV Canada was more active when I was you know, coming out of college. Mm. But uh, just the idea of like that much music, what it looked like, the... It was like, um, you know, it was like it was like our Hollywood Hills. It was the place you go to, you look at, you're like, I can make some of myself through that building. Right. It, it, everything to me. So I tried to build something just like that because I felt there's the next generation is going to be in, in Toronto or, or elsewhere now are just they're going to be looking for those places of opportunity. So that's kind of it's my business is a big you know, beacon of like what much music would look like today. Yeah. Well, like, cause uh, when I was going through the channel, I seen that there's an audition tape of you auditioning for MT- for as an M- for MTV host. All right, guys, we're back on the streets and we're talking to girls about guys and more issues and why guys just ain't getting it right. <laughs> You're doing all kind of crazy shit. And <laughs> Yo, so like you really, really wanted to be like MTV or M- uh, much music VJ at one VJ. point before this. Oh, buddy, I was, I auditioned like so many times. They told me to stop auditioning. Wow. <laughs> what, 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 okay, so how does, what, was it like an email, a phone call? Like, okay, we had enough of you. Stop. Like, no, how did that I, come across? I'm a hustler, man. I would, uh, so once I went through like the, the generic, like apply, 
try and get on the VJ search. Jeez, I, would, I, would, I would get turned down, right? So then I started like making demo tapes of short films and dropping them off at the building. And then I would like find the like director's email and then I'd be like sending them like, yo, check me out, look what I'm up to. So to the point where I wasn't allowed at uh, 299 Queen Street anymore. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. We don't want your tapes. We've seen it all. We're not calling you. We're not interested. Leave us alone. Yeah. That's how they dealt with you, basically. It's that okay. Sucks. Look at you now. But yeah, not, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No. Like, no, yeah, totally. Um, and I've met with a lot of those people, right? And like, they're just so busy and caught up in their careers then. And there was probably hundreds of guys just like me, right? Because that was that was the job back then. That was the... the <coughs> you guys had Strombo on a, a couple days ago? Yesterday. Or yesterday, yesterday yeah. for the people who are going to be hearing this, whatever, a few weeks later from this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to check that out. Obviously, I really looked up to that guy, so I, I couldn't believe I'm like, oh, I'm going on the same show as Strombo, and he meant so much to me, right? Meant to all of he us, really. So it was all of us, also, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It was we, a big, that's yeah. a big moment for the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even um, you had a show, um, Get Real, Get Lucky. <laughs> Can we talk yeah. about that for a minute? Sure. So break us break yeah. down that show to us, the premise of Get Real, Get Lucky. Oh, God, it wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I made all these. I'm trying to get on TV to be a host. So I got the, the worst dating show that's ever been aired, and it only aired at, like, 1 a.m. Um, but I think, yeah, I was like, I was like the, there was a co-host, a female co-host, me and her were, we're teaching guys how to uh, like finesse the game or to, like they were, they were the worst pickup artists and we would teach them how to get better. But the whole thing was scripted. Right. And it was pretty obvious. It was all staged and planned. So I don't know. Like we had like, like guys who are picking their nose on a date and I'd have to like sit them down and be like, that's not cruel, dude. You don't pick your nose. <laughs> Crash Jay's party. And with a little luck, he can get real. So he can get lucky. <laughs> it was cheesy, right? It had no budget. I think I did like a hundred bucks an episode. Wow. So okay. you, you got and it on a channel. Sometimes you got to do things to get on, to get on. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. Oh, I, Gorilla. I, I was happy to be on TV or, or right? something I thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> what channel was that? Was that like Omni or like uh, the cave? Was, the cave network. The cave. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I remember that. Wow. <laughs> like, nice pull. That That's why I was like, no. But I'm the TV that. guy. You know me. Nice so. pull. Yeah. Guts. <laughs> nice pull, guts. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's mm. crazy. So like wow. you were young. You were young back then too. Like you're, you're like. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm old now. I was uh, 20, uh, probably 10 years ago. Or uh, yeah, I don't know. I was probably like 25. I'm 34 now. So, okay, that's not that old. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just turned 41. Like, come on. I was so like, he, did, older. he didn't have the beard and stuff. He didn't have none of that. Yeah, you're good, man. Don't worry, you're good, man. Yeah. yeah my, my audience can be a little younger, so sometimes I'm gone. God, I, I I can't keep up with this TikTok. I don't get it anymore, you know? Yeah. Well, shit, you're still connecting to the people. Like your your videos are accumulating like hundreds of thousands, some of them in the millions. It's like like I for a second we didn't realize that you were a Canadian channel. To be yeah, honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Just for the amount yeah, of traction well, it's received. A lot of people, uh, yeah, they figured I was doing it in LA and they figured I was tied to record labels. And uh, I, yeah, it was, um, it took a while. I did a six buzz uh, before they were famous and then people started That's kind true. of figuring it out. Since CP24, has there been a one-stop shop quite like Six Buzz TV? I mean, the pages got it off. And like when I do like someone like Tory Lanez, I'd be like, yeah, I'm from Toronto or Toronto chair girl. That was fun. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we are going to hit. I'm going to hit a billion views this year. So it's crazy. Amazing. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Did you grow up in Toronto? That's definitely dude? a milestone. Yeah. Yeah. Did you grow up in Toronto? Yeah. I'm in Mississauga. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Like, what was the upbringing like? What was like life like before you started getting into wanting to get onto the, to the screen? Well, I was always trying to get on the screen. I was always like a child actor. I would go down to the city to do like auditions to be in flyers. And I got like 
I got to be in uh, like a Kmart flyer with like uh, Damien Stoudemire and the Raptors when I was like, oh wow, yeah. Nice. So I, and then like I was always into performing. I was like in all the school plays and uh, I was like an Irish dancer, always like a performer. Mm. Um, but I was also a bit of a shithead and uh, I would get into trouble a lot. You know, I was a, I was like one of the cool guys, I guess. But that was like the the plan. You know, I was going to be like this crazy TV host, jackass, do it all. And uh, yeah, I went to university to make uh, art, make like theater and film stuff. And then I went to college, did the same. And I started I before I did before they were famous. I did a whole bunch of other shows. I tried to do like a, like a college drinking show. I mm. tried to do a home renovation show. I tried to do. Uh, uh, like like a scripted sitcom. I was making all this different content and I was just putting it on YouTube. And uh, then I heard like some Jenna Marbles was making like a million bucks on YouTube. And I was like, well, I better give that a go. I might, I might as well start taking that serious. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So wait a minute. Okay. One of those shows jumped out of my brain. College drinking show. Explain that to us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the yes, yeah, so I went to McMaster University, and I was like, all these kids are party animals, mm. but no one wants wants to put this on TV. But like every kid's doing it, so I made a show called Beer for Breakfast. <laughs> I took a bunch of frat kids. I I filmed. Uh, I spent like everything I had, thirty grand. I filled the house with cameras. I filled the house with um, like inflatable stuff so they could have like KY jelly fights. Whoa! Um, wow. Uh, a uh, beer, bought DJ equipment, like <laughs> I got lawyers to like fill out things. So I made my own reality TV show, and I actually went viral. I got I got picked up by all the news in Halifax to London, Ontario, to all the way to like Alberta. And wow. uh, the mayor of London actually like went on a police report. And it was like if Michael McCrudden a beer for breakfast. Come to this town, he'll be shown out of the. And I'm like, just oh like, wow. I made this show on like my bartending money. So it was, it was wild, you know, and that, that was me just figuring out the internet before it became what it became. Wow. Yeah. You seen the whole landscape, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact that the, co the the mayor was like, ah, he can't bring his show here. We're not having that's That means you, they're watching. People were watching, obviously. Remember that's big. I remember getting interviewed on like, I uh, man, I got interviewed by John Tory nice. for this. Wow! But another interview was uh, a guy got me on the phone and he was really like ready to be like, "How do you think, you know, this is gonna sell or this is gonna fly?" And I was like, "Dude, this is what every kid's actually doing. If you want to twist the narrative, The Bachelor is like, no guy dates twenty five women. Like that's sicker than what I'm." Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Facts. Facts. That's the only place where a woman, where, where woman will, would allow that is one man to to date twenty five women. You can't do that in the real world. Yeah. They call you a pimp if you do that. Super facts, buddy. If, if you're texting twenty five women, someone's gonna someone's gonna screen grab that and out. That's a hashtag That's... me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a me twenty five. <laughs> oh man, so. This channel that you got right now, because it's it's intriguing, dude. Like I went all the way down to the bottom of the channel, right? And then I seen like the uh, evolution. So what sparked the idea of let's start going to before they were famous? And was the channel called before they were famous before you came up with the idea? No. So it was it was a dead channel with like ten thousand subscribers, my own personal subscribers. Stop and, for a second. Uh, Stop I for a second. Dead channel no with 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> Keep That's going. a lot of people. That That's doesn't sound people. very good. <laughs> yeah. Right? Keep going, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I've been doing this a while. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it was like, it was just in my name. Like I said, that, yeah, that MTV host video was on there and not a bunch of like random projects. So I had actually written a screenplay on Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was my childhood idol. Mm. And uh, it was like, it was like uh, 150 pages, right? So I decided, I saw people making YouTube a thing. And I said, all right, I'm going to take that whole movie script and dumb it down into a three-minute video. I'll title it before they're famous. I'll throw some clouds in the background. 
make it positive. Let's just put it up. And I did that in my mom's basement. It cost me nothing. I edited it on iMovie and that was it. I put it up and I didn't even look back at it for months. But when I did look back, I was like, that got 40,000 views nice. and made Jeez. like 80 bucks. And I was yeah. like, damn, I could do more of those. So I think the next few were like, um, kind of like A-listers, like Mark Wahlberg, or oh, I think I, I did the guy who invented Survivor, like the TV show. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Mm-hmm. People that were interesting me at the time, and uh, something clicked. You know, I think it was, it was definitely hip hop. I think it was like Lil Wayne or 50 Cent. Like I dropped one of these, and all of a sudden I got like 100,000 views in a week. Nice. And, they, and the kids were like, yo, there's no one, no one going into the depths of like this detail on this yeah at the time this was new right right so so all of a sudden i had a little a little loyal audience who was giving me the suggestions so they would be like yo you gotta do uh eminem you gotta do uh dr dre you gotta do uh everyone and then they started giving me the new artists the kids right so that really ramped up the show to um we hit i hit a million in like like six months like it really flew nice. from there the channel itself or like a particular video? Well, I, I had one video hit 16 million views. Um, Whoa. And I think that video made like 50 grand. 16 million, you said? Wow. What video was that? Because I feel like the Dan Bazarian one is the first one that went over a million. That was, yeah, that was one of my first big ones. But it was a Mia Khalifa top five. Mm. Oh. Hey, picture this. Mia Khalifa was in Miami outside of a strip mall when she was approached by a random dude. He handed her a flyer and he... And, shout uh, out Mia Khalifa. <laughs> yes, shout out to her. Shout out to... Yes, yes. yes. Well, God bless Mia Khalifa because that one video paid off all my school my school education. <laughs> oh, she she paid out your debt. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. What's the irony of that? And she did all that to pay off her school stuff too. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you guys. I actually feel awful, but I think I made more off Mia Khalifa's adult career than she did. She, she uh, did, yeah. Yeah. I owe her, big pack, so. I owe her one of those. Yeah, hey. <laughs> hey, she's not getting royalties off of her videos. Like the thing is with YouTube, it's not like a one-time payment. Like as the video continues to accumulate views, you'll uh, and it's monetized, it'll just be in the back end making money. Yeah, well, I don't. So, so if I make a Mia Khalifa video now, no money. Like her name's been uh, demonetized. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. So she's had to name herself Mia K. Um, I would hope, for the love of God, like they give you blessing if it's in fact your name, right? Right. Um, I'm not too sure, but obviously she's she has all the potential and all the reach. She's world famous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the one that you hit over a million with first, what was that like when you hit your first million? You know what was a big one for me? Rapper Stitches. I remember Oh, him. from LA. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Uh, uh, I'm in love with the Coke. No, not in love with the Coke. Um, what was it? Something to do with Coke. I saw, you saw me about he sells coke or something. It was like, it was all about dr- cocaine. Yeah, he's the guy that we, he was beefing with the game, right? Yeah, yeah. He got knocked out quick, but oh man! But that was a that was a sucker punch. <laughs> How was that? Because the guy wasn't focused. He was focused on the game. His mind was focused like, set on the game. I was the more next like the manager jumped the million up. for the video. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's okay. No, no, it's cool. Um, how was that feeling? Um, well, I had I had done a lot of YouTube, right? So I was kind of like, all right, we're in business, and I, I never, I never, um, I was like, all right, we got a million. What? How can we get two million? Um, all of a sudden, we it was just exploding. The show really exploded. I know every video I've made, definitely in the first like three years, the star that I made it on watched it. So we're talking. Nicki Minaj to Beyonce to I know Cardi B like sh- sh- I, my friend bumped into her I did it my friend bumped into her getting a hot dog I swear to God mm. and was like my buddy Mike made a video on you and she got all defensive she like did, wasn't did and then he's it was the before they were famous and she's like ah I love that video <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. Yeah. yeah 
But like all of them, man. Like I've heard, I've, I've, you know, been in the DMs with from the top to the bottom. It's crazy. Yeah. What about the reverse? You any anybody ever give you flack? Oh, big time, big time. Uh, Nelly and Chris Brown, they blocked me on Instagram. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Why was Chris Brown so hurt? Yeah. Wow. Uh, He's tired of the same story being told, I'm sure. Well, it was Rihanna, that's why. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Who else? Give us some more. I know you got some more, some people who probably, because you got like, 2000 videos dog i'm sure a few more people were like yo what did you why did you say that about me why did you bring up these true details about me <laughs> no, no. yeah well i know i think i keep it very it's not opinionated and it's not um it's not that i'm out to like real i'm really not out to get anyone and i'm not digging in anyone's garbage if it's like already blasted all over the web i'm not you know like breaking new ground here right yeah but I did have a show titled after they were famous and that was kind of clickbait to get more viewers in and that that hurt people's feelings because it was kind of like what are you what are you trying to? And in the video i'd be like you're still famous more famous than i'll ever be but it was a bit of a you know it was kind of an ugly look and uh, I, I changed that show it's called where are they now now but um yeah at the time too i thought youtube was going to be around for like two years i didn't think it was going to be around forever Yo, mm -hmm. any y'all got anything before? So what, I, what about, I, I seen no, recently that the, with the Houdini you did before they were gone. Is that another series that you're doing? Or is just that was the only one or? No, yeah, let's talk about that. It was local talent here in Toronto who rep this city hard. Now he even flex Canadian money in his music videos, which is something I've never even seen before. Um, before they were gone, it's been, uh, been the, the, the show that's got me in the most controversy recently. Um, I've been doing that one since since Robin Williams, like 2015, 2016. Okay. Mm. That, that show, um, it's touchy subject, but like I got I got a lot of love from XXX Tentacion's sister. She told me it was like unbelievable tribute. They loved it. Nice. Houdini's girl or a girl that he had been with, she she was giving me good praise about the video. Like the video yourself, if you watch the show, it's very classy and respectful. Yeah, yeah, it is. A lot of people have given me a hard time that um, I'm really taking advantage of a, of, a, of a tragic situation. I was at Houdini's um, uh, memorial there uh, on Blue Jay Way, paying my respects. Mm. But like, yeah, man, it's part of the news cycle. We do biographies, right? Like if you go to the, if you go to chapters and walk into the biography section, it's going to you're going to have people that have passed away. Also, Tupac and Biggie were big stories on my channel, uh, Kurt Cobain. Mm. So it just kind of, it became ingrained with, like, you're doing biographies and it happens. Yeah. And I, for me growing up, like, Princess Diana was one that I remember, like, going to the news, listed, like, I didn't know who the hell she was. I was a kid. And I want like, oh, my God, she died. And who is she? And it meant mm -hmm. something. So yeah. that's... You know, that's what I do. And like, I put on a suit and I, I try and like be respectful and inform the other half of the world who doesn't know these artists. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm taking like, we're going to turn them into fundraisers because I, I catch a lot of flack that like people don't like it. But the content's done with like good intentions, you know? And it's mm -hmm. well done yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a good idea to spin it into a fundraiser because then it's not going to, it might, <coughs> it might take away from the blow that, some people might feel from it yeah but that's, that's a really yeah. good idea i'm t like i've i've turned off i, I make no money i still do them um yeah. i've waited like months and weeks but like like the news isn't gonna wait so mm -hmm. uh yeah i think the fundraiser is the best solution and youtube's uh they've come up with some kind of feature to make that really easy now so that's good nice that's good i was gonna ask how do you not talk about certain subjects about like how do you pick that because there's a video that you did and I felt like there's information that's out there and it's a subject that I wanted to talk about too on my platform, but I feel like it's very tricky and I don't even want to really bring it up too much. But like, how do you pick like what not to talk about with certain people? Because a lot of their business is out there. Mm -hmm. I think I like, I, like I, was, I was in this to, to make it as big for me as I possibly could. Cause I, you know, it was a 10 year journey to get onto YouTube. So I was like, 
I'm not, as long as I'm not breaking any laws or hurting anyone or doing anything like, like, you know, I, I never, I, I just don't have bad energy. Like I'm not racist. I'm not yeah. homophobic. I'm not anything politically incorrect. So I was like, as long as I'm speaking facts and, um, you know, everything's kind of like authentic and, and, and I have no agenda here to like hurt anyone. I really don't think I'm, I'm doing anything wrong. Like my gut, my gut hasn't told me like you're going too far. Mm. So I don't know, man, it's been kind of pedal to the metal and it's media. Like it's pretty fast moving and pretty cutthroat. So I built like a lot of things around me to like keep the, the show going. And that, you know, there have been times where I'm like, damn, like I just met this guy and you know, he's in the news for bad reasons. So maybe I'll, I'll do his bio, but I'll kind of skip over the, the bad stuff. Uh, I don't know. It's everything's a little touch and go. I just touch try. And, I just. I guess I listen to my gut, and I try not. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's hard. <laughs> what? What? Can you tell me what you were dealing with? I don't know if I want to bring it up, but it has to do with George Floyd. I'll put it like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Can, can we edit it out after? Actually, try it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go for it. I'm going to timestamp. Well, Jesse, well, George Floyd, I don't know if you know, he has a sex tape out. Well, there's footage of him having, like, a sex tape out, right? And I seen you did the Before You're Famous with him, and you didn't bring that up. And I don't know if you knew or not, but, like, something like that, like, I was debating to bring a subject up that up because, like, we didn't know until, like, they just put it out there, hey, this guy died, and he was in, like, the sex tape or he's doing porn whatever you want to call it like you know what i'm saying so it's like when do you pick and choose certain subjects not to bring up on your on your platform right so in that so i'll be honest with you when i did the george floyd it was four days after he passed because he he was so obscure a lot of this stuff hadn't come come up or like that i i didn't find that in my research so mm. i i didn't have to consider discussing that. Mm. I don't think I would have because of everyone's uh, emotions were so high. I don't, I don't think it would have benefited me or the story for me to to include that. But like an example, we had XXX Tentacion, and he he had a lot of allegations and a lot of stuff going on. True. So yeah. I wasn't, I didn't ignore it, but in his in the video where he passed, I really like summarized it shortly and, and then highlighted like the man had turned his life around. This is all the charity work he was doing. Mm. This is like what all his friends have to say. Like I showed the, I showed the other side as best I could. You put it. Yeah, in I'm new to the whole media stuff and being in front of the media. And I'm like, you got to know certain things, when to bring it up and how to bring it up. And obviously just like you said, right. Everything that's going on to bring something like that up with him you know, that'd be really sticky. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. nervous with the George Floyd one. I'm also like a white guy kind of in hip hop, right? Like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want like, I, so, you know, I have Kevin on the team who does the Instagram. So sometimes I kind of like, I gotta be like, dude, am I, am I okay going here? Like with, with some topics, you know? Yeah. Um, and like growing up in Canada, right? Like my best friend, but it sounds stupid, but like, you know, your friends are of all colors. So like, I don't think as I, in America, it might be different or whatever. I'm just like, so everyone I've associated with, like, is like from Iraq or from Lebanon or Asia. You know what I mean? Like, I just. Mm -hmm. like, Very much cultural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Technical question. Beginning to end, how long does it take to put together one of those pieces of content? Like, research to upload. I filmed three today. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jeez. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a factory. Uh, okay. So we get, we get the, the, so the audience is telling me who, who's hot, who they want me to feature. So right now we got 2k baby. So his record label actually reached out. So we got him answering the questions. The questions come in. I'll spend probably four to eight hours writing it. Um, I write it. I film. It's a 10 minute video. I'll film it in about 15 minutes. Then I hand it to an editor and they've got a day's work to cut it together. So mm -hmm. eight hours and then it gets uploaded and we're on to the next day. So I have two editors. So, you know, I get, I make sure we get at least one video a day done. And then I got, cool, yeah. I 
I got other shows. I got a Spanish channel. I got my girlfriend on a channel. Cool, so no? We're producing like 30. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So what's the Spanish channel? It's it's the exact same thing. It's just more like reggaeton, Latin artists, nice. and it's, uh, it's in Spanish. Okay. Oh. And do you, do you have a teleprompter, are doing- or are you are you doing it off there your head? No, I no, I I used to do it off my head, but it, things move too fast now. I, I have a teleprompter. Okay. Okay. Are you doing this show in Spanish? Which which the before they're famous? Yeah. Yeah. So that that. But are you are you the one that's like speaking Spanish? No. So initially Spanish? we dubbed me, oh. but then <laughs> like YouTube is about like relating to someone, right? So no one liked it. So then I found a girl I went to college with from Mexico, Mexico City, and uh, she was a TV presenter in Mexico. So. I said, stop dubbing me. Just get get on camera. Do it. You host it. Yeah. Uh, nice. Makes nice. sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got you got a like a ten pronged approach to the media right now. You know what I mean? That like a lot of people I don't think are aware of, dude. You know what I mean? Like I think even like right now we're getting enlightened. Like we're just thinking that you're just doing before yep. the fame, but like you got your hands in a lot of different pots, bro. Right. Sorry, you mentioned that your girlfriend, you have your girlfriend doing a show. What's her show? Um, she does Famous Entertainment. It's a, it's basically a girlier version of mine. Nice. So I did, <laughs> I did dabble outside of celebrity, celebrity content. I tried some like the beer show. I tried a science show, but now I, I kind of just stick to what I, what I know best. So she does house tours. She does plastic surgery. She does fashion. Um, she just kind of like variations of my show, but 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 for a female audience. I understand. Mm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Man, he's monopolizing the market over here. Facts. What's up? All under the same channel? No, three channels. Three channels. Three channels. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, crazy. Like the big boys. Mm-hmm. So, like, with all the Toronto stuff that's coming at you, even like, or as a Toronto man, and you, you know, you've interviewed Houdini separately on um, Hot Freestyles, right? Actually, before my question, how did how did that come to be that you just did the one interview with them, with Houdini? No, I was talking to I was talking to Houdini in the DMs. He was supposed to come in, um, but uh, I it just it didn't happen. And then COVID hit, which kind of just put up. This year was all about getting as many artists in the door. I just got Universal. They're opening. I'm in Liberty Village, so they're opening up a studio here. Oh wow. Um, they just signed up to start bringing in some stars. So this year was like my year to do face to face, but COVID kind of put a, a wrench in that. Yeah. Um, but I definitely, I definitely need to use this platform to promote more Canadian artists. That's for sure. Yeah. So the question I had is who are you checking for in Toronto? Like the Toronto rappers that you're, that's on your radar. I think it's, I got like, like fans will send me like a, I have a list of like 30 guys to get in contact with. So it would be like probably they're not six buds, but they're like, you know, another Instagram account with like 300,000 followers who are, they're starting to like see the connections and, and, and people up. Yeah. So like who are the, who are the Toronto rappers? Like your favorite Toronto rappers like? right now that you like? Yeah. Uh, Pressa's is the biggest one we got to get in. Hmm. Mm. Um, Houdini was the was on the top of the list as well, um, but that's as that's as far as it goes with my ear to the ground. I'm not. Uh, I I have such a heavy workload that I don't get to uh, really look up and see. As, as it's when they get to my doorstep is when I'm like figuring out everything about them. Wow! 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 Like, I'm on the. I like. I'm listening to hip hop in my car each and every day, right? So I'm like, oh, who's this? You know, Tyler Yahweh. Like, we got to get the video done. Yeah. So, I'm con- like I'm just overloaded with new artists is the problem, but there's so much going on in this city, and like I said, like for me, I couldn't find anyone to give me that break. So now that I have this, I'm I'm very eager to to start doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who did you listen to growing up then? The first CD I ever bought, I bought in in England, was Dr. Dre 2001. Nice. And I bought it in British pounds, and my parents kicked my ass because it came to like a hundred dollars. It was like wow. fifty British pounds. Wow! Wow! Yeah. I hope you still have that. I still, they I wanted you to forget that. about Dre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Eminem was like, 
everything, obviously. I still listen to the, the Slim Shady LP religious. I have like seven copies. Um, yeah, like I was like, like hip hop, like I was wearing FUBU. I shouldn't have been, but I was like. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was also an Irish dancer, so I've always been a bit of a, a weirdo. Uh, oh, go ahead. I have a quick question about that. So sorry. So you mentioned this Irish, this Irish dancing before. Are you doing this Irish dance on TikTok? <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! You you outed me. <laughs> I, don't know I was like, I wait a minute. I don't know if I still have the moves. I was spoke. They said I was going to be the next Michael Flatley, the Riverdance guy. Oh yes, and Riverdance was fire. Come on. My sister was on. Was she was one of those girls in the lineup? Really? <laughs> That's crazy. I watched Riverdance religiously every time it was on TV. Riverdance. <laughs> wow. You don't need to teach me that. We could do a video, and y'all teaching us that. <laughs> that that content, bro. Yeah. yeah, man. We love hip hop. Well, Michael you, Magruder you collab. You need yeah. to yeah. make that video. Yeah, come on down to the studio, bro. I'll, I'll teach you a few moves. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anybody else got any more questions before we before we uh we move on to our next segment? Well, I'm go good. ahead. Go ahead. Hmm? Ask your next go question. Ahead. Go. I I don't think I have any more questions here. What I want to know, actually is who do you have on the radar for your next videos? Um, yeah, let me bust out a thing. So, uh... Oh, exclusive? I mean, I've the ambiance. <laughs> I've got, man, I've got, I've got a list of 500 people to do. It's... Whoa. It's, it's like I'm never running out of people. Um, but it, right now I'm finding these TikTok anthems. Like, that kid Stay Solid Rocky with his party girl. That's like the best jam. So we just did him, uh, but there's like kids like Suburban and uh, what was this other kid's name? W X Y Z. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so right? people send you these all of these artists to check out. These are these all hip hop artists, or they're just well, hip hop has always been a big sell for me. Uh, like they're the, like my audience is very hip hop focused. But like I'll like I do a TikTok, one of the TikTok girls. I try and keep it open to everyone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, two K babies coming in. Um, I don't know. Every week, every week I'm inundated with like a massive amount of people. I got to do some kid named Hofu, Haofu. No idea. He's just massive on TikTok. Mm. Uh, have you ever done I Love Friday? I did. Like, I big video. You did right? Yeah, yeah. That was a big one too. Yeah. Who the hell is that? Not it's you. Just- I know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> you, want to tell, you want to tell them? You want to put these guys up on game? Please, please do. Going back to our home girl, <laughs> they're actually this uh, this group, a uh, girl and a guy, and they have a they got big off of this diss track, uh, dissing Mia Khalifa. Uh, so what, you made a video on them, um, Mike? Yeah, I interviewed. I I I uh, I had them answer all my questions via email because they're. I where are they? They're they're somewhere in like the. West Midwest, I think, from what I remember. So yeah, I I totally collab with them for their biography. It was a big. I think I got like seven hundred k on that one. Mm-hmm. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, that was that- a good good song. <laughs> it it was. Okay, the last question I got here on this on the blue whale challenge. It's not even a question. I just have it on the list of different things you did. But I found that like an interesting thumbnail and video right there, like. Can you, do you remember doing that video? Like what inspired that? Whale Challenge started making waves online after it was reportedly connected to a growing number of teen suicides in Russia. Yeah, that, that one made Toronto news. There was a girl or someone like went up on a crane and stayed there for the day or like they didn't, they, the, the people went and got them down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she climbed up. She was just chilling. Yeah. So I, it fascinated me and I was like, what is this weird internet stuff? Now that video, like there's a, a lot of things on YouTube get demonetized, right? Right. So like, like Mia Khalifa gets demonetized. So that, that video, I know blew well, I got a couple million or a million views. I mean, no money on it, mm. but it's like, it's an interesting, you know, piece of internet history. I was very like, like I just did anonymous. Sometimes I just want to kind of, I want to know what the hell these things are. So I, I, 
I figure it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Blue Whale, I, it, it just that girl was up on a crane. I wanted to know more, and uh, we're putting up content every day. So I said, let's make a video. Nice, nice, nice. Well, we got Michael McCruden in the motherfucking building. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. Can, can I get one more quick question? Yeah. Are you doing before their famous verses? More of those? Um, no, what I, so what I want to do is <sighs> I want to turn that into like like a video game, like like get a graphic designer and have like people like uh, okay. Cuz I've been I've been doing it for a long time and I'm I'm a little I'm just tired of like seeing the same thing, right? Like mm. YouTube's gotten so crazy and there's there's so many you want you want to stay ahead of the game. So right now we just did a facelift before they're famous. Next is the rich life. I'm like I'm pr improving the quality of all my series. So when I up the quality, I'll bring back versus. But I, I just had a big one with uh six nine and Snoop Dogg. That one got a lot. Yeah. Okay. Do you like that one? I seen that it's here 240, but I, I want to click on it because I was going through, right? And I seen the same, but I don't like to support that guy. I don't like to <laughs> my you. I don't like to give him views, you know. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to you know give to his cycle of his comeback. I don't want to so I won't watch it. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I, interviewed, I interviewed his jeweler, Jimmy Boy, and even oh. Jimmy Boy was like, oh, man. Like, I, I was like, like, no one wants to fuck with him. That's crazy. Those are, so Jimmy Boy made that big, stupid shirt. Wow. He, he didn't go deliver it. It was, it was, there was security came and picked it up. Yeah, he's not going nowhere in person. Wait a minute. Does anybody know this? Is this an, like a We Love Hip Hop exclusive right now? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that is that is an exclusive. Yeah. Jeez. Where's the more flyers? Yeah. Because that's Paul Wall's partner. That's Paul Wall's partner, right? Yeah. Um. Were they partners before? With the grills and stuff. Oh no, that's Johnny Dang. That's oh, Johnny oh, Dang. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Iceman Nix, his partner. Okay, ah, okay. Dope, okay. dope, 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 dope. But dope, that's an dope. exclusive, anyways. No matter how you look at it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Might have to drop that on the people real soon. You know yeah. when I did, I did like when Six Nine got released, I made like five videos on them, and my viewership like dropped. Like people were like, <laughs> <laughs> like I got views on the day, and then people were like, forget it. Nah. <laughs> His name is yeah, Salt on these streets right now. You so, know what I'm saying? What was the percentage of drop off? Oh my god, my channel took like a thirty percent dip. Oh shit, that's a big dip. That's crazy. Off of that's, five that's videos. A big, that's a big dip. Off of Mayu. That's off of Mayu. Mayu. That's off of Mayu. Yo, that's his poison. Yeah, yeah. yeah charity yeah. didn't want to take his money. The kids' charity said, "Nope, we don't want his money." Yeah, it only works for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. So listen. I want to hold you for a minute, right? We got a yep. segment called Smoke and Mirrors. Yep. 